Denmark is building the first energy island in the North Sea to aid in the country's achievement of its 2050 carbon neutrality goal. The Chinese Desert Solar Power Facility, which can generate energy while recovering the parched deserts, may serve a more effective function than this one. Bleak environment, however, if this energy island effort is effective, it will help Germany overcome its severe natural gas crisis in addition to reducing the cost of energy generating across Denmark when the Danish Energy Island project had been finished in its entirety. Sanctions on Russia were imposed by the US and Europe, which made the energy crisis in Europe worse. It's expected to help more Europeans cut back on their dependency on Russian energy. This project will act as a paradigm for the world's transition to sustainability. Denmark is a nation in Northern Europe, home to just 5.88 million inhabitants. Subscribe to this channel now to witness the most remarkable and disturbing world projects before we continue. Ready? Let's start! This country is known as the Wind Energy Kingdom and is a top performer in terms of reducing carbon emissions on a worldwide scale. Since Denmark has been a global pioneer in the transformation of renewable energy, namely Larley wind, electricity, and heating systems, even a developed country like the United States cannot compete with Denmark in terms of energy. Five of the top 10 manufacturers of wind turbines worldwide are based in Denmark, and more than 60% of wind turbine manufacturers employ Danish technology. Denmark's entire power consumption is 47% covered by wind energy production. Despite having one of the most advanced energy sectors in the world, their power costs are not the lowest. Even this year, the price of power has before hit a record high. The price of electricity in Denmark was 8.4 Danish crowns, $1.02, or almost the same as the price in other European countries, only costs $0.08 per kilowatt hour despite having 1.4 billion people. A kilowatt hour didn't cost more than $0.2 US dollars even at the busiest period. In order to lower electricity costs and achieve the goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 70%, from 1990 levels by 2030, Denmark has decided to five-fold its offshore wind power producing capacity. The first phase is to construct the first energy island ever in the North Sea. Around 100 kilometers separate this energy island from Denmark's west coast. With potential upgrades to 10 gigawatts, the offshore wind farm's initial output will be 3 gigawatts, which is sufficient to power 3 million households. 10 million homes are now served by Denmark's biggest offshore wind plant. After the throne, the energy island may resemble an offshore power plant. In our minds, the nearby windmills provide power. Eventually, it might reach 600. The combined output of these two massive wind farms will eventually be 12 billion watts more than Denmark would ever require. The surplus power that the Danes are unable to utilize can be distributed to the countries of Europe. Other countries in need will receive power through cables buried on the ocean floor. Currently, power shortages are happening throughout all of Europe, including the UK. In the UK, natural gas is largely used to generate energy. Moreover, natural gas is used to generate 40% of the country's power. In the UK, natural gas prices have been rising, and there is even a shortage. The British National Grid has issued a warning about anticipated power shortages this winter ever since the UK joined the sanctions against Russia. The situation is the same in Germany and France right now since there is still a severe lack of supply on the electrical market. Despite the fact that France and Germany often swap power, there is now a deficit. They are meant to spend the worst winter together. When ties between Russia and Ukraine will improve is still uncertain. Consequently, in order to help them stop their reliance on Russia and aid Europeans in lowering their power costs, France and Germany are two European nations that rely solely on the Danish energy island for their energy needs. The pilot project in Denmark will be located at least 80 kilometers west of the country's geographic location and will be at least 120,000 square meters in size. This area is almost as big as 100 Olympic-sized swimming pools combined even if the location of the undersea cable has not yet been decided. From this energy island, green energy can be delivered to at least 3 million residences throughout Europe. Obviously, this is only the first step in the project plan. The present capacity of wind energy is predicted to be around 3 gigawatts, 
and it will ultimately reach more than 10 gigawatts, which will be enough to power 10 million homes. What is now known is that Denmark and the Netherlands will be connected to the wind power, which will be able to accommodate other power plants to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. In addition to creating a lot of power, part of the additional electricity might be used to electrolyze seawater to create hydrogen. Hydrogen could then be used as a sustainable fuel for large ships and airplanes. Bornholm, a natural island off the coast of Denmark in the Baltic Sea, will now serve as a second energy island thanks to a $34 billion investment by the Danish government in this energy project. The project's 2 gigawatt capacity construction has already started. However, when the combined power of the two islands is turned on at full capacity, the production may increase to 12 gigawatts, which is equivalent to the whole existing offshore wind capacity of Europe. Germany and Denmark share an island in the North Sea. Norway and Sweden may be found on the opposite side of the sea, on the northern side, with the North Sea to the west and the south. After this project is completed, European nations won't need to rely on Russian oil and gas. It is envisaged that they would no longer be burdened by high natural gas prices and excessive living expenditures. Actually, European TSO operators first proposed the concept of renewable fuel in 2017, and it has since undergone iterative development. From the first wind power hub, it has slowly grown to power X power diversification is that. Using renewable energy, conversion produces low carbon gas or liquid fuels. However, as of now, there isn't a truly good illustration of this concept anywhere else in the world. This proposal is supported by several Danish institutions in the region. When the wind is relatively strong, Denmark will also have to cope with the delectable problem of figuring out how to use the additional clean energy. If, when the wind is suitable, the offshore wind power potential approaches 40 gigawatts to relieve system strain, the extra power can be used to produce sustainable fuels such as offshore hydrogen production. The relatively significant differences in wind and light allow the grid to be supplied directly to other countries and regions than Denmark. Actually, using 100% green energy at this moment is really difficult. Utilizing a technology that allows for more variable power use, such as electrolysis for the creation of hydrogen, is a great choice. Even though 2030 is the projected completion date, the final appearance of the island is yet unknown. A man-made island will cost a lot of money, and some of this energy island is owned privately. Will they consent to handing up control of their island to the government? Building workplaces, data centers, entertainment venues, and museums on the energy island for visitors to come and study is still in the early phases of construction. The government has made a number of private businesses an invitation to collaborate. Private companies will, of course, evaluate the soil's quality and make an effort to reduce any environmental impact. But regardless of how this initiative is carried out, Europe will get more benefits. The bulk of European countries are energy dependent, and Denmark is the EU's biggest oil producer. With the completion of the energy island plans, all 27 member nations have simultaneously committed to attaining carbon neutrality by 2050. Denmark decided to stop oil and gas development in the North Sea at this time under pressure from Russia and Ukraine. Even if Denmark can meet Europe's need for power with its new energy, natural gas prices in Europe won't go down. In order to minimize carbon emissions and make it possible for families and businesses to consume this clean power, the entire EU must also use more renewable energy. This project, in my opinion, has the potential to become carbon neutral and considerably enhance environmental protection in addition to solving the issue of excessive power bills. If this project succeeds, it will ultimately stand as the most successful example of green energy in the world, and other countries can replicate it. For instance, China, which is rated top for power consumption, consumed 8.5 trillion kilowatt hours of electricity in 2017, which is eight times more than India, which is ranked third and twice as much as the United States, which is ranked second. Because of their thriving business and large population, they already have a sizable source of green energy. But 60% of the nation's power is still produced by coal, a substantial air pollutant. If China can implement green power generation in the suburbs like Denmark, it will be able to achieve its goal of reducing carbon by 80% by 2050 more rapidly. 
The potential for offshore wind energy in Europe will be greatly aided by the energy island in Denmark. Under Putin, pursue energy that is free. If other countries follow the transformation that the Danish energy island undertook in response to the current climate change, the ecology on our world will improve. Additionally, it's conceivable that the globe may achieve climate neutrality 10 years sooner than anticipated. Share your opinion in comments. Also, click on this video to watch about another shocking project.